Hi friends, hope you are fine. Let us discuss electron transport chain within 3 to 5 minutes after this video. Hopefully you will find electron transport chain as a very simple topic. Let's take the term electron transport chain. So there is a transport of electrons as you see NADH donates electron. It is transported to different carriers that is located on the inner mitochondrial membrane. That is why it is called as electron transport chain or transport of electrons in chain. Let's define electron transport chain as a step-by-step -step transfer of high energy electrons through a series of electron carriers that is located in multi-enzyme complexes, finally reducing molecular oxygen to form water with the formation of ATP by chemiosmosis. So don't bother about this confusing diagram. Please just follow my voice. First, you should understand this inner mitochondrial membrane. So this is the outer membrane of mitochondria and this is the inner membrane where all multi-enzyme complexes are located where electron transport chain occurs and the space between this outer membrane and inner membrane is called as the intermembrane space. Now let us see the four complexes. First one is NADH dehydrogenase. As the word suggests, it receives NADH. The second one is succinate dehydrogenase. It receives electrons from FADH2. The third one is cytochrome BC1. And the fourth one is cytochrome C oxidase. The final complex from where electrons will reduce oxygen forming water. And the fifth complex called ATP synthase or a multi-enzyme complex that is involved in synthesis of ATP. Now let us see what is actually happening. The three processes happening in electron transport chain is electron flow and energy release, proton movement and gradient formation, proton motive force driven ATP synthesis. So what is happening with NADH that is formed during Krebs cycle? This NADH becomes NAD plus plus H that finally releases electrons and protons. As you see, this electrons enters complex 1 from NADH. Then it moves to complex 3 and 4, finally reducing this molecular oxygen forming water. So the movement of electrons, high energy electrons from NADH is from 1, 3 and 4. Whereas in the case of FADH2, the electrons are donated to the second complex that is succinate dehydrogenase the enzyme complex that is involved in Krebs cycle that is also located on the inner mitochondrial membrane. So as you see this electrons flow and finally reducing molecular oxygen forming water. So FADH2 enters complex second, third and fourth and finally reducing molecular oxygen to form water. So the moment of electron from NADH is from 1, 3 and 4 whereas from FADH2 it is from 2, 3 and 4. Hope this is fine. These are high energy electrons. During the movement of this electron, energy is lost. And that energy is used to pump protons from this matrix side to this intermembrane space. As you see, these electrons are pumped from this matrix side to this intermembrane space. The cytochromes are actually proton channels through which protons can move, but only in one direction. As a result of movement of these protons from matrix side to the intermembrane space, the number of protons in the intermembrane space increases. That is called a gradient. A gradient is formed between this membrane. Here the number of protons will be less compared to this intermembrane space. That is called a gradient or difference in number of protons on either side of the membrane. Now there is a natural tendency to make an equilibrium so these protons should move back but this membrane is impermeable and these complexes are one directional complexes so it will not allow this proton to move back. The only way to move back is through this ATP synthase, a protein complex that is involved in ATP synthesis. So when proton moves through this ATP synthase, this proton movement generates a force which is called as proton motive force helps in the synthesis of ATP from ADP and PI. This is just like a turbine. So there may be some active sites for this ADP and PI, 
when proton moves through this channel this comes together this catalytic sites comes together and forms a bond and finally forms the atp so atp synthesis is driven by proton movement that is why called as pmf driven atp synthesis hope you are clear now let me summarize in electron transport chain what is happening is high energy electrons from nadh and fadh2 that is produced during krebs cycle moves through different electron carriers in chains releasing energy finally reducing molecular oxygen to water during this electron flow energy is released and that energy is used to pump protons from this matrix side to the intermembrane space this creates a difference in number of protons on either side of the inner membrane or creates a gradient so there is a natural tendency for this protons to move back the only way to move back is through a protein complex called atp synthase when protons moves through this atp synthase the proton movement generates a force that synthesizes atp by combining adp and inorganic phosphate thank you so much for your support take care stay blessed you are with biologyexamsforyou.com